There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Is there, Toto? There is no place like home. Okay, Toto, go to daddy. Welcome to Cat's live home chat. And today's theme, if you haven't guessed it, is all about a home. And, you know, there's so many sayings. Home is where the heart is. Um, there's no place like home, of course. And our home got kind of knocked off the wall here. Um, there is no place like home. You know, Dorothy from one of my favorite movies uh, really had it right, didn't she? And she did everything that she could to find her way back to home. And today's guest is fearless in helping you find a new home. And today's topic is how to win, the top things that you can do to win in a multiple offer situation, because we all know the housing market is really crazy right now. Multiple offers are prevalent. So without further ado, and I'm gonna have to put my glasses on, this Dorothy can't see. They are red, much like her ruby red slippers, but I do need to see y'all. Um, Welcome, Houston's homegirl, Ashlyn Gray. She's a buyer's extraordinaire. Ashlyn, come on in. Welcome. Good morning. How are you? Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. And Thanks I for love me. your costume. Thank you. <laughs> you, you are a realtor extraordinaire, but I know that you specialize with buyers and that takes a certain heart. You know, I have my license. I work by referral only and mostly listings and stagings, but it takes a special heart and a special knowledge um, and skills and experience to really work with home buyers. And particularly now when we're looking at multiple offer situations, um, yeah. I was just listening to some statistics from one of my lenders that days on market are at 30, which is down 36%. The inventory is down over 49%. We have two months. Now, this is in the Houston area, but I'm sure globally all over because of the whole COVID conundrum, um, people are experiencing similar statistics. Right. And homes, this is key, homes are selling for 17% more above list price, which is up, uh, I believe, 10%. So that is going to segue right into what we're going to talk about um, with the experience and talent and, and uh, uh, seasonality that uh, Ashlyn has. So Ashlyn, tell us a little uh, brief that I, what I didn't ex explain about your background, and then let's just dive right into how to help our um, homeowners get into a new home and win out on a multiple offer situation. So hi, you guys. I'm Ashlyn, aka Houston's homegirl. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if you don't already know, I, I am super passionate about helping people get into their dream homes. I've been licensed for four years doing this, and I've helped quite a few of you guys get into some homes, and I'm ready to help others went out these multiple um offer situations so we can get y'all into into your own homes absolutely so let's let's talk about um the you know maybe the top three things that maybe folks don't know um in this situation because it's different you know it's really different right now right uh well the biggest thing it's the the market is different which makes the entire buying process a little bit different so before you even go into buying a home and this is when the market is um even slow um three things that i always say that people need to be sure of the number one thing are five things that you absolutely have to have in your house that way we know if a house comes on the market if it doesn't have these things then we won't even look at this house ah. because houses are going so fast Sellers don't want people who aren't honestly interested in the house, aren't pre-approved or anything like that to be walking through. And then, you know, COVID definitely doesn't help the situation, you know. So definitely knowing the five things that you absolutely have to have. And if that's 
four bedrooms, then you know if a three bedroom house becomes available, then you probably won't be able to make that work if you have to have four. You know what I mean? If it has to be in Katy and a house comes available in Humble, you probably won't be able to buy that. But those are it's important to outline those five things that you absolutely have to have before you even start your search. Absolutely. And, you know, I know from experience, and I'm sure you do, Ashlyn, that sometimes people don't know what they want. Right. And it's a process of elimination, mm -hmm. you know, and then they go, oh, yeah, I absolutely have to have a double oven. Oh, well, that right. wasn't on your list. OK, so let's revise that list. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I used to tell folks, you know, when I was in new home sales also, there's no perfect home. Right. Um, you know, so that's why it's so key what you say to know those five absolute things that you must have that are your must haves in a home. And you and I talked about this off camera. Mm -hmm. They also need to know what they absolutely will not. Absolutely. Want. So and like, that was the second me, thing. When I was looking, I absolutely cannot have a, a power line. Right. Because I'm all about energy and that's not the kind of energy that I want coming through my space, mm -hmm. but that may be a non-issue for someone else, but it, it may be. So as much as knowing what they do want, they really need to know some of the things that they absolutely do not want as well. That's correct. And that was the second thing, because there are, what I realize is that a lot of buyers, when they're looking at these houses, they're looking with very high emotions, right? So sometimes they say, oh, you know, well, we can compromise on this. And then they buy the house and six months later, they realize I should not have compromised on this. I absolutely mm -hmm. needed this in my house. And then they're mad at the realtor for letting them buy the house and whatever the case might be. But just as important as it is for you guys to know what you absolutely have to have, you have to know those deal breakers. Also, you have to know, you know what? That house has some floors that I don't like, which floors are small. You, those can be worked on those But in this market In this market, somebody's going to walk in and love those floors. You know what I mean? So you're walking in saying, you know, I don't love these floors. So I want $3,000 off the house price when that's just not even a thing in this market, full price or no price. <laughs> exactly. Full, full price or, or no price yeah. Absolutely. or over. <laughs> or, or over. We, we're seeing that as well. Right. And then sometimes folks, I think, um, especially maybe they're first time home buyers, mm -hmm. uh, they, they don't really have a full grasp of, you know, paint is not that expensive, you no. know, flooring isn't going to be 10,000, it might be 2000, you know, in a smaller home, mm -hmm. etc. Now, on the flip side of that, to play devil's advocate as a professional home stager, you know, I advise folks, you know, people don't buy what they don't see. Right. So, you know, yes, we're in a seller's market right now, but it's all about making the most money, getting the most out of your home and, and you know, uh, protecting your equity, et cetera. So maybe you're satisfied with X price, but had you shown them a right. neutral wall instead of a, a red wall right. uh, or um, floor, you know, hard surface flooring instead of carpet, how much more could you have gotten? Right. You know? Exactly. That, and, that is that's important. That, that, that buying frenzy, you know, which we're kind of seeing with multiple offers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. buyers have to walk into the space and be able to see themselves in this home, you know, and that's hard to do when the house is being sold the same way that it's being lived in. Mm -hmm. Because what you, what appeals to your taste probably won't appeal to you know, others, some others taste and not. And of course you can find a buyer. There's a price that every house will sell for in this, in any market. You know what I mean? So yeah. maybe it's less than what the seller would like to sell it for, but you want these buyers to walk in and get excited. Exactly. To fall in love. Uh, right. You know, buyers justify price with emotion and we need to create that emotion. So you as a buyer's agent, when you're looking for homes for your buyers and They've given you their list of must haves, et cetera. Um, I, I know we have less inventory on the market today, but given the inventory, if you have, you know, a plethora of selections in that price category, how do you determine which ones to show your clients? 
Well, the best part about that is right now that's it's, this inventory is so limited. That's just not even a thing. Wow. Wow. <laughs> inventory is extremely limited right now. Right now, it's kind of like searching for a needle in the haystack for uh, certain houses. So, but when we do have a lot of inventory, we look at, of course, the way that the ho the houses are presented. The first place that our buyers fall in love with your house is online. So it comes right. down to staging and photography, and right. you know. So we go through those houses, and if the if the photos online don't invoke some type of emotion because buyers buy with emotion, then we don't even look at those. We don't. Okay. So let's talk about today, and let's let's uh, let me ask you: Is there some tips? I don't, I don't want to say tricks, tricks, no tricks <laughs> there's no tricks. There's just expertise and, right. um, and methodology. So let's say you're in a multiple offer situation. You're mm -hmm. representing uh, the buyer, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you're in a multiple offer situation. How, you know, what, how would you counsel or advise your buyer to maybe hedge the, their selves uh, above um you know, what are some of the top things? Obviously we know, you know, cash, a cash offer, but not everybody can do a cash, cash offer. King. <laughs> but are there some other things that maybe um, you would advise your buyer to do to help win? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, right now, the biggest thing, what we're seeing a lot of is when, when we go into multiple offer situations, the listing agents usually call for highest and best. Highest and, and best, okay. Yes. And most people are like highest and best. OK, let's go up a thousand dollars and see if that works, you know. But with this market, highest and best literally means what's the number that you would be OK losing your dream home at. Right. So that is so well put. And, you know, Ashlyn, as we mentioned, most people are not buying cash, cash right. can, can, you know, that's real coming out of their bank account. Mm -hmm. But when you're financing at a 30 year fixed at what, 2%, you know, we, we used to do what's called reduce it to the ridiculous. Okay. It's <laughs> like, well, it's, it's $10,000 over what I wanted to pay. Okay. Right. Well, let's take that $10,000 over a 30 year fixed at 2%. Okay. Like you said, are you willing to give up this potentially your dream home for less than a Starbucks a day. Exactly. That's exactly how we have to break yeah. it down. Mm -hmm. That's what it comes down to because um, the other day I had a buyer ask, okay, what's the market value of this house? I'm like, it, this house is on the market for market value, but market value doesn't really matter anymore because you, there are 10 of y'all who want this same house. So it's here at market value. Somebody in this group of 10 is going to drive the price of this up because that's literally what happens with competition. Yes. Yeah, so let's talk about that market value. And that's a really good point that you bring up because really market value is what someone's willing to pay for it. Absolutely. Now, if you are financing, there, is, there can be an issue of appraisal. So let me ask you, uh, in your experience, have you had any issues with um, the the market value being driven up because of the um, supply and demand and appraisal not coming in. I have not personally run into that, but I have heard some horror stories from other realtors. Okay. Uh, but it's, I think appraisers are, um, they just know what's happening right now. Yes. <laughs> they are, they are aware of what the market is and market value is like you said, what people are willing to pay. So they come in and they do what they have to do to get the, get the numbers to make sense. You know what and, I mean? You know, that's good to hear because that's how that happens. I mean, you know, you start at a baseline, but how do you think values go up right. by, by that supply and demand? And they right. they must have, I'm sure there's some terminology in the appraisal world to um, adjust according to the supply and demand. Of course, right? of course. Okay. Um, my, my last, and I don't list a lot of homes, but my the last home that I listed sold for $11,000 over asking price and went under contract in 48 hours, right? So of course there was, that's a big gap, eleven thousand dollars. Yes, but quite possibly price. it was underpriced. No, it wasn't at the time because this was before you know the market got all ridiculous like it right. is. This was like at the beginning when the world started opening back up and everybody wow. got interested in buying houses. So the market supported the price at the time, but that was when everything there was the shift happening right then and there. So then the buyers came on in and it was like from there, I've just been seeing everything else fly off the shelves. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. And I know you and I talked about this um, <clears throat> before. Um, 
would you ever recommend that the buyer, uh, knowing they're in a multiple offer situation, uh, try to appeal uh, to the hum human aspect emotions of the seller um, in terms of maybe doing a little bio? We talked about that. You know, I'm, I'm my buyer's a young single mom, healthcare worker, mm -hmm. you know, looking for a home next to grandma, you know. Whatever, yeah. you know, I mean, heartfelt and honest, but do, have you ever done that with success? And so usually those no, those letters will come from the buyer in, in my case, because the, it's it's better when the buyers can say, you know what? I absolutely love your house. Yes. And I could just imagine myself living here and taking care of your house because some sellers sell with emotion, just like buyers buy with emotions. Yep. But tugging on those heartstrings can definitely get you in the door. Now, it doesn't always help because a lot of times, especially in this market, sellers are selling so that they can move to the next. So they sure. want the most money in yep. the shortest amount of time or the perfect timeline that works for them because yep. some people still have to get their house built and Things yeah, like that. So absolutely. But I think appealing really to those want, emotions it's, are important. It's worth a it's worth a try. Absolutely. Um, because sellers are human also. And I know some sellers, they get very attached or they could be. Let's say they've lived there for 30 years. And mm -hmm. so, yes, it's about getting the most money, but um, they 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 haven't actually emotionally stepped out completely yet. And so yeah. they may want someone uh, that they feel good about. Um, you know, uh, stepping into in the, their uh, house, into their home. Yeah. Yes. I know it's always better if you've got them into something else yet, building a home or transferring yes. or something. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So, so with that, steps that you would um, share? with what you just said, um, because people in the, t with the timeline, um, it's good these days to be able to have a flexible closing date. You know, because ah. you, and people are like flexible closing date. Like, what does that even look like? Literally, when you're ready to close this house, seller, we're ready to close. OK, we're ready. So if you need to go out and still find you a house, we have 45 days for you. Let's say you found a house and we are we need to close on the third, but you need a lease back until the 15th. OK, great. We can figure that out. But buyers have to be a lot more flexible with their closing timelines these days because sellers just have that negotiating power. They have that leg up. Yeah. So let's talk about that because some people think that price is the only thing that's negotiable. Right. And quite honestly, in real estate, there are multiple aspects that can be negotiated and can make the difference. So mm -hmm. there could be an example where, you know, a uh, buyer one is offered the highest price. Buyer two is a little bit lower. Buyer one is not flexible with the move in date. As mm -hmm. you mentioned, buyer two is now we're talking about, you know, that's that's valuable. That means something to the seller. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes people get hung up on, you know, definitely you want to go with as high a price as you're comfortable with, but you don't want to forget about the other things. You know, are you asking for buyers? Um, uh, I'm sorry, for closing costs or are you not? Right, right. Are you asking for a home warranty? Are you mm -hmm. asking for owner's title policy or not? All of those things you may think as a realtor or as a home buyer, oh, oh, those are all standard seller usually pays owner's title. Those are all things that are blank right. in the one to four agreement and are negotiable. negotiable yes. So, and, but that comes down to having a great agent on your team, honestly, because the, if your agent is just like, you know, we're going to write this offer. I think this is what we should put. That's just not how it works. You should sit down, consult with your client and say, OK, what do you guys think? OK, as a professional, here's what I think. And then meet somewhere in the middle. You know, but it takes a good agent. It takes for you to have a great agent on your team to be able to break it down. So you understand the importance of the closing date, the, um, you know, third party financing approval dates and all the other dates and negotiable items in the contract. It Options takes a great agent. All of yeah. And that that is key, Ashlyn, it, it, why, you know, folks need to go through, like you said, some agents may just, you know, fill it out. Oh, oh we do this. We, we, we always do this. Well, right. it isn't always. It's negotiable. And so the conversation should look like, well, Mr. Potential Buyer, how how serious are you about wanting this house? Mm -hmm. You know? Absolutely. Well, I must have it. You know, okay, so here's here's the whatever seven things that are negotiable. Let's go through them and what they mean. 
line by line, like you just mentioned, and right. that, you know, a good realtor, experienced realtor is going mm -hmm. to do that. Um, you know, many realtors out there are part time um, and, you know, maybe don't have the experience. Uh, they're still learning. But those are things you, that you want. You definitely want your realtor to be on your side and be knowledgeable about so that you can win on that multiple offer situation. Absolutely. And, and speaking about that timeline, it's important to know what your ideal timeline is before you start searching for a house, because <clears throat> a lot of people well, number one, this is just not the time to kick cans and look at houses just for fun. OK, so if you feel like you have until August of next year to look for a house, you're probably not going to be really serious about putting offers in and making a decision right away, you know. Whereas if I have to be in the house by January of 2021, I know that right now is a time for me to be serious about looking. And when I'm putting in an offer, I know that if I have to be out of my current place by January 31st, I don't have 65 days to give the seller to figure out where they want to live. You know what I mean? Right. So it's important to know what your timeline looks like before you go into just being flexible with dates and so on and so forth. Get serious about it, put a timeline on it, get to it. Absolutely. So you mentioned a little bit about a lease back and I know, you know, many people who are maybe new homeowners or first time homeowners may not know what that looks like. Talk to us about how that helps um, you negotiate or with the flexibility between buyer and seller. How does that work? So um, a lease back, it could be on the seller side or the buyer side. So that basically means after we close on this house, one of us needs to lease it. OK, <laughs> so or before we close on this house, because, one of of the timing, because of their timing situation. Correct. So let's say you you put an offer in on the house and the seller has not found their house or they're having a house built out. Okay. You want to close on the 3rd of December, but they won't be able to close until the 10th of December, maybe. So let's say you guys go ahead and close on the third between the third and the 10th. That's what's going to be called a lease back. Right. So that gives the seller time to get their house closed out, their next house closed out, get everything packed up, moved out, cleaned and everything and all of that. So usually with the lease back, there's a cost associated with it because it's like a lease. You know what right. I'm saying? It's like, we've closed on this house. It's no longer yours, but you can stay here if you give us X amount of dollars. Traditionally, that's how it works. But even in this market, we're seeing free leasebacks. You know, we're seeing, we're seeing leasebacks until whenever you get your house finished. Interesting. Okay. So, and so no that, charge. that's uh, something I hadn't heard of. So th that could possibly be a way to, help you in the negotiating multiple offer situation to have a leg up. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So just knowing, so if you, if, if your realtor calls you and says, Hey, the seller needs a lease back on this property, ask them, okay, what does their timeline look like? Are they okay with paying? Do you want to give, do you want to, do you think it's a good idea for us to do the lease back at no cost? You know, consult with your agent about this because your agent is definitely going to be able to help you figure out what the best route is to go. Understand that when you do a free a lease back at no cost, you are still you still have your mortgage costs for those days, which is why most people are saying for the lease back we pay, you know, we'll charge X amount of dollars. But right. in this market, we don't have it to give. Mm. We don't have it to give. So if you're gonna do a lease back, be prepared for all of that to be negotiated. The the mm. lease back, the length of the lease back, mm -hmm. as well as the price. How much uh, you're, you're charging? You want to charge? Oh, that's a that's a really good point. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I really never thought of that. Um, so, um, what are some? Are there any other tips that you'd like to share in terms of uh, what the the what the buyers should know and and how they can you know uh, get a leg up on winning um, with multiple offers? And you know, uh, on that, just a, a little segue to that. Uh, have you found, I know I have, there's some people who don't want to, if you, if you go out and say, uh, give me your highest and best, they're like, mm, I don't want to play. <laughs> yeah? Oh yeah, that's for sure. Because buyers, it, it's just kind of intimidating. You know, it's like, oh my God, I've fallen in love with this house. And you mean to tell me I got to put in my highest and best. And there are 25 other offers on this same house. Yeah, I love. It's just kind of intimidating. You know yeah. what I mean? The whole entire home buying process is intimidating as a whole, but 
then you add in the competition of several yeah, other buyers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, that's why a lot of times when my clients are out, when they're searching for houses, when they find the house that they love and want to put an offer in on listing agents, please answer your phone and or respond because I'm asking if you have <laughs> multiple offers because my buyers, a lot of them, they, they want to know up front, am I going to have to be in competition for this? If I am, yes. I don't want it, but maybe they want it bad enough. You know, maybe right. they want it bad enough, but I need to know right now if there are multiple offers, it'll save us all some time and energy for sure. sure. And it, it, and it helps your, your buyer, uh, potential buyer know, you know, where, you know, where do I need to stand on the negotiating? You know, they could still really want it. Right. And you're okay with being in a multiple offer because they know they can offer up strong. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, realtors an uh, answer your phones or text. I, I, <laughs> I guess it could be hard with some realtors who have like, you know, they do a lot of it and there's 25 offers. Mm -hmm. that, that could be difficult, but you right. know, just or at least just give us a note in the MLS so that we already know that you have multiple offers. <laughs> right. Right. And I know About sometimes it can come fast and furious. Yes. Like whether it's 24 <laughs> hours or 48 hours. But mm -hmm. yeah. It's crazy. Uh, how would you, um, Back when I used to work with buyers uh, several years ago, especially in a really lower, you know, like under 200, um, you know, we would just keep, you know, losing out on so many offers. Um, how would you suggest that or how do you keep your potential buyers um, not getting frustrated mm -hmm. uh, over that type of situation. I mean, just keep educating them or coming up with a new strategy. How, how do you prevent them from? So a couple of things about me when we first, when I've initially meet my buyers, I tell them that the one thing that I do not like and do not desire to have is excessive stress. Right. So before we write any offer, I always make sure that I put it in my buyer's head. If this is your house, the offer is already accepted. I know that you love this house, but if this if this offer doesn't get accepted, you have to know that your house this is just not your house. Right. The universe, God, whoever it is, just has something else in in your plan right now, right? Yes. So, we love this house, but this is not the one. If yes. it is the one, your offer is going to get accepted. It's gonna get even if it's not the highest price, even if it's not the quickest closing, because it's not always the highest price that wins right. the, the um, multiple offer situations. You know, right. so if it's your house, it's your house. You're going to feel it. You're going to know it's going to be confirmed because the offer is going to get supported. And so that kind of helps my buyers, you know, kind of ease. So I've, I've realized that my buyers, they go through these transactions and we're writing offers and I'm, they are starting to text me now. Like, like, you know what, if this is my house, then it's for me. Cause I'm the one that's like, put some good juju in the universe. Y'all let's, you know, sprinkle some glitter and love all over it. And they like, you know what, Ash, if it's my house, it's my house. And I'm like, I'm here for it. That's what, yep. that's what we need because yep. you can't get discouraged losing yep. out on a lot of, um, bid Absolutely. Like and that. especially if you've done the right things, if you're with a professional who's guiding you, right. Um, then it's just, you know, you, you put it out there, like you said, into the universe and it's divine right order if it's right. it meant to be. So I'll tell you a, a funny story. Now, this, did, this didn't turn out the same way. Uh, it kind of ricocheted on them. So I was in new home sales. It was the last lake lot. Mm -hmm. And I take the potential prospect out there. We walked the lot, et cetera. She really loved it. But, and I tried to get her to, you know, reserve it. And she's just like, you know what? If it's meant to be, it'll be meant to be. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we used to have a saying that home, that home that you uh, went home to think about someone came today and bought. Right? That's the one okay. right there. That's the one. <laughs> Girl, girlfriend, I want to tell you, they came back. Uh, I had a partner. My partner told me someone was on their way with a check. I had to honor that. We, we worked as a partner mm -hmm. partnership and they were on their way with a check to, to get that lot. Who shows up in the model home? <laughs> <laughs> wow it's happening we're, we're livid yeah of course of and course it up and i'm like you know i mean i followed their instructions i yeah. wanted them to reserve it yeah and, but you know what i think people are just used to having the timeline where they can yeah. go home and sleep on it which that I mean, that makes was a, perfect sense if you got the time, but yeah. if you don't have time because like that, the houses it's, are gone. Murphy's like, Law. Murphy's exactly. Law. And that exactly. Lake Lot had sat there, but sure enough, Murphy's Law. So I guess it wasn't 
wasn't meant to be your home, but don't be mad at me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And with that said, it, it's happened more often than people think. There sometimes a house will go under contract and then it'll come back on the market because the buyer didn't couldn't secure financing or whatever, whatever the case might be. Right. And if that's the case, and I, and that has happened, you know, a buyer will say, "I love this house," and we lose out on the um on the multiple offer situation, and we keep looking for thirty days, and then that house is back on the market. Guess what? We're submitting an offer again because if that's your house. It's your house. It's already yep. there for you. It's yep. already there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Great, great, great advice. And that's, uh, you know, this will change like everything changes uh, in the market. And, you know, we're, we're not seeing this um, uh, seller's market just in the under 250. You right. know, I've got some realtor partners who are seeing it in the heights in the 600s where oh, yeah. their client bid 30,000 over and it wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. They bid 50,000 over. Mm -hmm. You know. That you know what it's funny because listing agents now it's gotten to the point to where they're almost offended by a full price offer. Like, don't send no full price offer. We need a little bit more dollars on that offer. Like, that's how the market is right now. And I'm like, Gee, Louise, yeah, save some coins. It, it, it's kind of crazy, but I have to say, and knock on wood, we're we're still still at Tadava Cat getting, you know, plenty of calls for those vacant yeah. homes. You know, there's no floor plan that's perfect. Most of them right. are not perfect. And um, people have, you know, 87% of people out there have a hard time envisioning a vacant space. So even with the market the way it is, you know, I'm getting calls to do quotes on, you know, uh, properties that have been on the market for 60 or more days and mm -hmm. they're not, you know, they're not getting the offer. So, um, you know, staging is still um, is still critical. Um you know, to, I would say the majority of homes. Um, it is. And yeah. as a buyer's agent, I can attest to that because walking in vacant properties with my buyers is a lot different than walking in a fully staged property. And even the ones that aren't staged, but have furniture in them, my buyers are like, I cannot imagine myself looking in here, living in here, you know? So yeah. Right. And, yeah. and they always, uh, they, they always think it's smaller, which mm -hmm. is, which is odd. They'll, they'll, uh, think it's smaller because they have no spatial, you know, configuration. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we love those open concept floor plans, but th you know, they keep us in business because people really can't figure out. Right. You know, <laughs> I mean, when I go in and do occupied staging, it's like all the furniture is pushed up against the wall mm -hmm. because people really don't, don't know how to make zones and, you know, different things like that. So we're, we're finding that we're doing more and more what we call uh, mixed media or Occupy Plus, where we do uh, go into a consultation, tell them what to remove, what to pack up. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we co I come back with my team and we bring in power pieces, you right. know, like what you've got behind you, some greenery, uh, <laughs> and botanicals and artwork and power pieces. So it does look great in pictures and then properly place their furniture. That's probably a huge portion of our mixed media state. People just don't, you know, um, they just don't have the eye or the training, you know, right. to, to realize <clears throat> that, you know, you need to have a walkway mm -hmm. or, you know, you've got too much space in the middle. Right. Absolutely. So. It's important to know how to set stuff up like that because I don't I only have a, a little bit of an eye, you know, because I've I've done a staging or two, but I always gotta call the professional because it's certain stuff that I can't even figure out. And I'm a realtor. This is what I do. Yeah, and you and you've done great. I mean, I'm a master stager. I still have ones I kind of have to scratch my head and go. <laughs> let me take a triple look at this. Right. You know? And sometimes it's tr trial and error. You know, um, one thing I tell my team is don't leave a stage without taking pictures because your eye may not catch it. Right. Pictures never long mm -hmm. with some symmetry or what's missing or what do I need to take away? Absolutely. You know, that, that kind of thing. Absolutely. So, um, how are we doing on time here? Ah, okay. We're at the 32 minute mark here. This has been some great information, Ashlyn. And um, I Thanks really for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on the show because I know you have a passion uh, yeah. for what you do. And uh, anyone's out there, you know, who needs some help, whether you're a first time home buyer or relocation or what have you, um, you know, Ashlyn takes care of her clients, as you can tell, and is very, very knowledgeable. Um, we are going to, as usual, put everything up on the YouTube channel, uh, but uh, so people can hear it now. Um, tell us what is uh, what is your next client you're looking for, uh, and uh, what's the best way for someone to reach you? 
So my next client that I'm looking for is you, whoever <laughs> it is watching this. <laughs> Where's my thumbs up? <laughs> And I can be reached. You guys can find me on Instagram. I am Houston's homegirl, or you can feel free to text or call me. My phone number is 713-261-2891. I'm always available for you guys to answer your questions and get you started. And just remember, you guys, that you this journey takes courage. That's why it I am the lion today. Courage. It she takes courage. Lion. Yes. There's no place like home and I got you. Okay. I got um, you. It takes courage. And you know, when I used to work with first time home buyers and new home sales, I used to say, you know, there's so many pieces to the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Let me be your puzzle master. And that's what Ashlyn can do for you is put all those pieces together because real estate is complicated. Okay. Um, and you need someone to, to, to take you every step of the way to negotiate every step of the way and be your advocate, um, and to make it easy peasy and take that stress off of you. So awesome. 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 Just remember there's no place like home. No place like home. There's no, did we put our sign up? There's no place. <laughs> And thank you so much for watching. Uh, give us a thumbs up, a comment, go to our YouTube channel, sign up for our YouTube channel. We are past the 50% mark, uh, getting our 100 uh, subscribers. Uh, so we'll get our own URLs. I'm super excited about that. It's just on my cat. And as usual, stay positive, stay hopeful, mm -hmm. stay connected, mm -hmm. connect with Ashlyn, Houston's mm -hmm. homegirl, connect with Tada by Cat, Next Level Staging and Design, and go forward this weekend and pay it forward with positivity. Until then, have a great weekend. Bye, you Bye, guys. <laughs>